on, give God praise out there where you are. Amen. We thank God for you being with us once again in the house of worship. God is an awesome God. He's been so good to us. And we're just giving God praise for another week of his mercy and his grace. We're looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We come to glorify the name of the Lord. And I, again, I invite all of you, all of you who are with us today to enter into worship. Amen. Clap your hands. Wave your hands. Lift them high unto the Lord. Sing melodies unto God, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. We came to worship him. Amen. 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 God has been good to us. Yes. Yes. And we are, he has allowed us to assemble again, once again, in, in these virtual worship services. I miss all the people of God. Amen. I just pray and hope, you know, they have said that they are, have found um, some cure to this disease, uh, some medicine that hopefully will be effective. Now, we don't know how soon that will be sent to all of us, and I don't even know how safe it is. So I just want to stay under the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for you, and so let's get ready for worship. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Don't these musicians sound beautiful today? Amen. Amen. Oh my God. I mean, it's just coming into the service. I was walking down the hallways and listening to Brother Malachi and Elder Calvin and Brother Smiley playing, and my heart was just rejoicing and just excited about coming into the house of God. And I hope you feel the same. Yes. Amen. Amen. I, I know you hear me say this every week. Don't just sit there and watch the service. Enter into worship. Amen. Amen. You're not watching TV or some TV ministry and just looking in. Amen. Amen. We came to worship the Lord. Amen. Yes, Amen. We came to give God praise. Yes, Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Amen. People sit and watch us and like, what's the next thing going to happen? No, come on, let's praise the Lord yes. together. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad.
God bless you. Amen. Our elder Calvin King is coming to us with the word of the Lord. We sh uh, are still feasting, sorry, on um, the word of the Lord on last week, and that is to rebuild. Yes. Amen. And God is speaking to us today. Let's rebuild what God has given us. Amen. And have faith that uh, there is, in believing that there is nothing impossible for God to do. Yes. Amen. Let us hear the word of the Lord from our Elder Calvin King from Lamentations on this morning. God bless you. We're going to read for our opening scripture coming from Lamentations, the third chapter, starting at the 22nd verse. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion. He's my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. God bless you. Amen. Great is the mercies of the Lord. Amen. He's a merciful God. Amen. And I know that pretty much all of us here today and all of you out there have prayer requests upon your hearts. Amen. I uh, was sharing with Brother Smiley this morning. It's been a tough week. And so much has been going on around us. Um, sickness, death. Um, people are struggling and trying to make ends meet. And, uh, but God is, has not forsaken us. God has not forsaken us. He's still a right now God. He's able to meet and provide for all of the people of the Lord. And no matter who you are or where you are, put your faith and your trust and your confidence in him. Amen. So whatever your prayer request may be this morning, um, even though we can't hear you, the Lord hears you. He knows your heart. And I want you to make those requests known unto him. Again, remembering all the sick and the afflicted, those that are shut in, those who are bereaving on today. We pray for them. We pray for those that are behind prison walls those that are in the hospital, amen, whatever their situation might be, I know that you have loved ones that uh, you want to see saved, and uh, we're praying for the unsaved loved ones, uh, those that don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sins. God is able to touch, deliver, and to save. So I'm asking you to join with me in prayer today, wherever you are, whether you're listening over the phone or viewing in, with us on today, or even in the congregation right now. Let's look unto Jesus. Amen. Father God, we thank you today for all of your goodness, all of your mercies, all of your kindness towards us. I pray that you would hear and answer prayer. God, you're able to mend the brokenhearted. You're able to encourage those that are discouraged. Father, we're all going through. We all have trials and testimonies and tests that we're all facing each and every day. But we have confidence and faith, believing, knowing that you are there. Yeah. And that we put our trust in you. And we ask you, oh God, right now, in the name of Jesus, that you would heal, deliver, and set free. For your hand is not short that you cannot save, neither is your ear heavy that you cannot hear. Hear our request this morning, oh God, Answer our prayers today. Lift that heavy heart right now in Jesus' name. For you know the needs today. You know every need. And my God will supply all of our need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. We thank you and we praise you today for this service. Be in everything that is said and done on today, every song, every praise on today. We ask it in Jesus' name, anoint the word of God unto our hearts, even now in advance, and that our hearts be open to receive what thus saith the Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen, amen and amen. 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 Come on, let's give God amen. praise on today. Amen. amen. Well, we thank God for our, this great church. We thank God for 
the ministry here on this corner, yes. amen, and for the doors that are still open yes. and for the lives that we're still touching. And we want you to join in with us on our mission statement, the Memorial Tabernacle Church has come together by the Holy Spirit for the specific purpose of preaching and teaching the Word of God, the Bible, and about Jesus Christ, God's Son, and to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom of God to the North Oakland community and its environs, to bring healing to the broken heart and deliverance to the oppressed. Amen. You know, there's a song that Sister Tremaine Hawkins sings, it, and it goes way back in the 90s and the 80s, I believe. Excellent Lord, God is an excellent God, isn't he? You are my God. You are my King. Excellent Lord be exalted on high amen so lift those voices in praise on today you know it you know it you know it amen come on praise god with us you are my god you are my god
If you didn't get up out of your kitchen seat, if you didn't get up off your sofa, if you stop looking in the mirror and just give God praise, amen, you'll feel a whole lot better. May the Lord bless your hearts real good. Thank you for joining us in worship today. Amen. Our sister Tiffany is coming to us with our morning's announcements and let us hear what God um, has for us in our church and his ministry and what is planned for uh, this month and the month to come. Amen. Good morning, church. We are excited to worship with you again on this Sunday. We are grateful for all that God is doing, and we are just happy. Amen. 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 So we're grateful that you all made it to worship on today. Um, and we just want to do a couple of reminders for you. Um, please remember to pray between 6.30 and 7.30 p.m. on Sunday evenings for all the requests that we have before the Lord. And then also join us on Tuesday evenings at 7 o'clock p.m., for our conversational Bible study, we're still studying the book of Colossians, an awesome discussion. And we were reminded this past week that we need to praise the Lord in the midst of everything you're going through. Just sing, send up a song of praise and the devil will flee. Amen. Amen. So always have a song on your heart. And I also mentioned last week um, that we are going to partner with the city of Oakland again this year for their annual Thanksgiving dinner. We need a couple of more volunteers who are available to volunteer on Monday. Uh, November 23rd from 1 to 4 p.m. We're going to be packing up um, a goodie bags, swag bags for the homeless, uh, over 4,000 of those. So just a couple more people, if they're available, yes, it is on a different day than we normally would do it um, because on that Tuesday, they'll have organizations coming in to actually come and pick up those bags and distribute to those who are hungry in our community. So if you are available, just let me know. We'll get you signed up and registered. And we just, we just honored that um, our partners are still continuing with their ministries, continuing with their mission, and they're asking us to be a part. So we're just grateful for all that God is doing, how it's continuing to move and bless. And that concludes our morning announcements. I'm going to hand it back over to our pastor. Give him a hand as he comes. Amen. God bless you. You know, I was listening to Sister Tiffany, you know, as the Lord was speaking to my heart. It, you know, Thanksgiving is not like past Thanksgiving. Uh, Families won't be able to get together like they normally would and sit down and show uh, their love and their thanks, but we're still thankful. That's right. Amen. And we're thankful for all of what God is doing. And so um, we're doing all we can uh, to be reminded of the fact that we have a lot to be thankful for. And we have a lot to give thanks for. And uh, they all are telling us, the professionals and the science is telling us, if you have, uh, if you can stay home, stay home. And, and that hurts when you aren't able to go be with grandmother, and see your aunt and your, maybe your children across country and other places. And uh, you want to be with them. But it's, it's hard to hear someone say you can't even fellowship with your own family. That's right. But uh, in spite of all of that, be glad that they're still here. That's right, yeah. Be thankful that you can still call them on the phone, amen, or have Zoom family gatherings or whatever you do and give thanks. But here is what the Lord told me, and I want to share this with you uh, today. I know we're going to be helping with volunteers at the City Hall in the City of Oakland, but every morning, every morning, Right here in our community, down the street, is the Telegraph Community Center. And it breaks my heart to see people lying down the block, trying to, waiting rather to go inside to get a hot meal for breakfast or lunch. And you would be amazed right here on, in our community, right here in our community, Sister Joycelyn Golden, works there as a cook, and to see people just waiting, trying to get another meal, it breaks my heart. 
And so the Lord spoke to me concerning this for memorial for our church here. On next Sunday, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, I'm asking you to, if you can give an offering of $50 or more above your tithe, $50 or more above your tithe, our total receipts for that day, the Lord says to tithe 10% to Telegraph Ministry. Listen to me carefully. If you can give $50 or more in the offering above your tithe, maybe whatever you have, if you can't, maybe you can't, don't have 50, whatever you have, whatever our total receipts are for next Sunday, we will give 10% to Telegraph Avenue Ministries so they can help feed the hungry right here in our own community. They sit on the stairs of our church. Sister Tiffany and Sister Peer are very faithful about going out there when they see people to give them food or clothing because we can't gather together, but they are faithful in doing that. And uh, you'd be surprised. They sit on our stairs and we give them change or money or clothing or whatever we can. And the reason why I'm saying this, this is Thanksgiving. Yes. And if you are blessed to be in a house, to turn your heat on this winter, yes, yes, yes. you're not cold. No. You have everything you need. I have everything I need. But it's cold outside, people. And when you see homeless people with no shoes right here in North Oakland, walking down the street with no shoes, coming at, on garbage day right in front of our church here, looking inside the garbage cans right here for food and we're blessed amen, amen. amen. i said we're blessed amen. we're blessed so whatever you can do next sunday next sunday if you can give fifty dollars or more or whatever you can give to the ministry here on next sunday we will pledge to give 10% of our total receipts for that day to Telegraph Ministry so we can also be a blessing right here in our own community. Is, if I'm not clear, call me, because I want you to be clear of what I'm saying. Amen? Amen. May the Lord bless you all. Come on, give God praise right now. Some of my deacons are here this morning, and they said, Pastor, how can we, 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 need, we need all we can get ourselves. Amen. And I know that's on the minds of people. I've gone to the post office box this week, and I'm telling you, I, I'm, I was nervous. I'm still nervous, because there was no mail of anybody giving this entire week. That's unusual. And so to make this kind of request of you, I'm believing God and asking God to touch hearts and to touch everyone. Amen. Amen. And so we, we're wondering how we're going to make it this week. But I believe when we're obedient to God, if we bless somebody else, God will bless us. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. Amen. If we bless somebody else, God will in turn bless us. So may the Lord bless your hearts real good. We're getting close to the word of God, and I'm excited to have all these powerful speakers. And keep in mind, next Sunday is our Thanksgiving Sunday. And we come prepared to give thanks. We're just going to give praise, amen, unto the Lord on next Sunday. And uh, God is my everything. He's my rock. Oh, my God. Yes, amen. So get ready. We want to just clap and praise the Lord. You are my God. Amen. Amen. God is my everything. God is. Come on, Brother Smiley. I'm already, I'm ahead of Brother Smiley this morning.
Well, you can do better than that. Come on, give God praise. Amen. God is my everything. He's your everything. He's my everything. Is he your everything? Yes. 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 God is my everything. Amen. Our elder Jeanette Words is getting ready to come to us with the word of the Lord. And our hearts are glad today for what God is doing. And so I want you to get your Bibles ready. Amen. Amen. We are a Bible-believing, a Bible-teaching church. Amen. 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 And we want to hear what God has to say to us on today. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 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 Jesus, Jesus. Sing it again, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Father, we're so grateful today for your love, your mercy. We thank you for another opportunity that we have to stand in your presence. God, you have been amazing to us. Yes. You have been awesome to yes. us. Yes. Father, we say thank you for all of the ways that you've made, for the needs that you've supplied, for the doors that you've opened. Thank you, God, for being our healer, for being our peace, Lord, for being a supplier of our need. Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, thank you. As the psalmist says, if we had 10,000 tongues, yes. we would praise you with everyone and it still wouldn't be enough yes. to appreciate all the things that you have done for us. And Lord, we ask you to bless us today together as we share these few words with your people. We ask you, oh God, to speak to each of our hearts that we might leave our presence, Lord, saying it was good to have been here. We thank you, God, for what you've done, for what you're doing right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. And the people said, amen. amen. I praise God today because he is amazing to me. He is good, good, good. And I want to go to the scripture, and every time I think I'm not going to be long, and I say that, it seems like, I'm longer than I was the last time. So it is my intent today to share the word of the Lord with you and I don't, and just let you just know what God is, is sharing with me. Our scriptures today and what we're gonna share today is, and Pastor kind of led into it, is about Thanksgiving. Um, and our subject today will be Thanksgiving for Friendsgiving. Thanksgiving for Friendsgiving. And our scriptures today is, three, um, is Proverbs 17, 17. Says, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. The next scripture is John 15, 12 through 13. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. And greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friend. This is the word of the Lord. This is a season set aside for Thanksgiving. It's a special time for remembering our blessings and all that God has done for us. And we thank God for all of our successes, our victories, and our accomplishments. We thank God for the things that he's done. And I was just praising God to, um, this week for just how good he is to me. And yes. a lady had come up to my desk, and we were 
talking about some of uh, some issues, and she was saying that her boyfriend has lupus, and oh, I said, oh, I'm so sorry. And then we began to talk about, you know, that disease. And I told her that I was diagnosed with lupus many years ago, and she said, you have lupus? You don't look like you have lupus. And I began to tell her how good God has been to me. And she talked about all the medications that he was taking, and I told her I used to take those. And she said, what do you take now? I said, I have not had medication, I think, since like 98. Mm. And she said, you don't take anything? She says, my boyfriend takes Plaquenil. I said, I do too. I did too. It made me hallucinate. I couldn't close my eyes. Mm. And so I said, and every few months I had to go to the doctor, the eye doctor, to have my eyes checked because the side of flat side effect was blindness. And I said to myself, how much sense does that make? So I'm just sharing this with you today to let you know how good God is. So no matter what we're going through, God is still good. And we have a daily prayer of thanksgiving for our life, our health, our strength, the activity of our limbs, our food, our clothing, and our shelter. But sometimes we forget to thank God for those people that he's allowed in our lives just to be a blessing to us. Our ultimate prayer of thanksgiving is God for giving us his son to save us, to redeem us, and to give us everlasting life. Also, we're thankful that we can know Jesus for ourselves and have a relationship with him but today I want to add to our prayer of thanksgiving. It is a prayer of thanksgiving for friendship. Mm. Yes. A prayer of thanksgiving for friendship. Thanks to God for those people that we call friends. And I'm always amazed because many times we have friends, well, I believe that most of the time, God brings people into our lives that's totally different than us. And I think he does that because how are you going to be a help to somebody if they're just like you? Exactly like you. Mm -hmm. And I believe, and I look at some of my friends, and some of them are rather quiet. Some of them have, you know, not a strong personality like I do, and some of them are talkers. Some of them are not. But I always look at the things that they have brought to my life. And a friend is an intimate acquaintance, acquaintance who is loved, respected, and esteemed. The word friends is sometimes used merely as a word of salutation or neighbor. You know, like you might see your neighbor and you'll say, hi, friend. But when you come down to the essence of friend, your neighbor is your neighbor. They might do some things for you, but that friend is like the Bible says, a friend loves you at all times. Yes, yes. And Abraham was called a friend of God, according to 2 Chronicles 20 and 17, and also in James 2 and 23. And I looked at the relationships in, that God has given us in the Bible. Jesus called his apostles friends. If you look at John 15 and 15, it was, you will see it right there that God called him, Jesus called him friends. Yes. And scripture from the Old Testament with Abraham to the New Testament when Jesus partnered with 12 unlikely men yes, yes. to fulfill God's plan and purpose. God has never intended for us to go alone. You know, people will think, well, I can do it all my, by myself. That's not the will of God. No. That's not the will of God. And how can you do the work of the Lord by yourself? The work of the Lord and the purpose of God is bigger than you. That's right. It's bigger than you. And we have friends. We have all of our friends. We have stories. And I was talking to another friend at work, and Becky is one of my co-workers, and when we were talking this week about different things, she's taking Friday off, and every Friday, Vicki and her friends, they have, they celebrate 
Friendsgiving. She invites friends over for dinner, and it's a time to share, to reminisce, and to appreciate each other for what they bring to her life. And as people of the Lord, we should be much more appreciative right. of right. our partners in the gospel right. and the people that God has brought along to, to us to support us, to encourage us, and to just to be a blessing to us. We all have our stories. Some of them are funny. It's funny when we get together and we get to talk into the remember when. Do you have friends that do you do that with? Yeah. We get together and something will come up. You will remember, remember when we were in school and this happened and that happened? Remember when we came to church um, and I was talking, so, um, I think Imelda and I was talking, and I was remembering that one time when we had taken the bus and Sister Silla and I had taken the bus from her house down here to, to um, church for HYPBS. Mm -hmm. And we had met these boys on the bus. And they had come to church with us. We walked in with these boys, and Elder Patterson came. He's like, where are you all going? <laughs> and I said, well, we brought them to church with us. And they told them to sit here, and they sit there. And they were not really excited because we brought these boys. And they sat here for a few minutes, and they left. And Lois and I said, what happened to the boys? <laughs> she said, they left. But and we laughed so much about the things that we remember from when we were going up. But there were periods in our lives that we don't talk about very much. Yeah. There were times and situations that we would rather forget. Do you have those? Yeah. But there's something in our brain, our mind, that choose to dwell more on those things and the harder we try to block them out from our memory, the more we think about them. We remember those days of anger, hurt, disappointments, loss, sadness, and lack. We remember those days of almost giving up, almost giving in to the temptations and the distractions that confronted us. But along came that friend yeah. and said to you, you are not that crazy. Amen. Get a grip. Get a hold of yourself. And some friends can, can talk to you like that. And sometimes, and some friends don't even have to really say anything. They just give you a look. Sometimes I think of Sister Jones. And sometimes thinking be gone on. And Lean do not even say a word. She'll give you that look just like you better straighten up. You like a look like, what is the matter with you? But the Lord places those kind of people in our lives to help us. We were at the point where they, the Psalmist David said, I almost slipped. But that friend came along a side of you, took you by the hand, walked with you, and held on to you until you could stand on your own. Yes, yes, Think about yes. it. Think of some of the places that you've been in your life yes. that you thought you could not make it. Yes. Think of some of the times you have been sad or depressed and so much was going on in your life that you kind of shut yourself away. But along came that friend and spoke encouraging words mm -hmm. to you yes, that God. said you can make it. Yes. I love you. Yes. What do you need? Mm -hmm. How can I help? Yes. The blessings of the Lord will make us rich yes. when we plant things into other people's lives. Yes. Just as Pastor said, it's not about us. Right. But those friends will be there, and the Bible says a friend loves you at all times. All time. Even in your mess. Right. Even when you're acting totally crazy. Right. You know those people you have say, leave me alone. Don't say another word to me. The friend call you the next day, how are you, just like you never said anything, because they love you. Thank God for help. Thank God for that friends that refuse to let you fall. That friend that just wouldn't let you give up. Think about it. Thank God for the honest friend. That one that will tell you the truth even when it hurts. Thank God for that friend that you can be totally honest with and share your most inter, innermost thoughts. 
Thank God for that friend will say to your face, okay, you've been going around in this whatever you're going through long enough. Let's pray and move on. Thank God for that friend that knows all the stuff about you and love you anyway. Thank God for that friend that will hold your confidences. Have you ever had a thing that was weighing so much on your mind, but it was thing, I better not say that. You just didn't want anybody to know. But along came that friend. And it was the friend that no matter what you said, they told nobody else. Mm. You never heard your business on the street. Yes, yes, when yes. you walked into the room, people were not whispering about you mm. because that friend loved you enough to allow you just to spill out so that you can be free and move on with your situation. Thank God for the friend that makes sacrifices for you. Yes, yes. Have you ever had a friend that you called and they came over in the middle of the night? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you ever had a friend that got on an airplane, mm -hmm. got in a car, drove miles just to come to your rescue? Yeah. Think about it. We need to thank God for those friends that make sacrifices for us. Yeah. There yeah. are some yeah. friends that you didn't tell your financial situation, but a uh, envelope came in the mail and said, this is just to say, yes. I yes. love you. Yes. Yes. When you thought, how am I going to get from point A to point B? Mm. God spoke to the heart of your friend, mm. and they stepped in just in time. The word reminds us of the supreme sacrifice when John 15, 13 says, greater love. Greater love, yes, greater love mm -hmm. hath no man than yes, this, than a man lay down his life for his friend. Mm -hmm. The opening scriptures that I read says that a friend loves at all times. Oh. Many times we come to crossroads in our lives. Sometimes we have to make tough choices, difficult decisions. Many times we're not sure just what we ought to do, what direction to take. But thank God for those friends that will give us godly counsel. That's right, that's right. Those friends that will pray with us mm. and stay with us until we get confirmation from God yes, as yes. to what we should do. Thank God for those friends that will assist us in completing our assignment. Mm -hmm. Last Sunday, Elder Kevin shared the story of Nehemiah with us. And I was really blessed by that message. But in that scripture that Elder Calvin had read last week, excuse me, I keep dropping these glasses because I can't read with them on. Elder Calvin had read Nehemiah, and Nehemiah had a desire to build the walls that were in ruins. Mm -hmm. There were many times God put things in our hearts, but it's things that we know that we cannot do alone but he will speak to the hearts of somebody that they might come along to help us. Right, Nehemiah right. 2, 17 and 18, um, and it says that Nehemiah, I want to tell you, Nehemiah didn't ask his friends to help. The Bible says in 17, then they said to them, you see what we are in, the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire. Come and let us build the walls of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. The 18th verse says, And I told them of the hand of God which had been good upon me, and also of the king's words so that he spoke to me. So they said, these are his friends, Let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to do this good work. Yes. There will be people that will stand up and help you yes. right. because they are friends. Right. It's not their vision. It's not their ministry. But they are coming alongside of yes. you to help you because they are your friends. And in the same token, there will always be the other people 
call haters. <laughs> Nehemiah had them. Sam Badlett and Tobiah, they were haters. They tried to discourage him from doing what God had told him to do. But God provided those volunteers that said, we will build the wall. Yes. David had Saul, but then the Lord spoke to the heart of Jonathan, and he came along yes. to help David. There may be those who say they are friends. You may even consider them as friends, but sometimes they seem to be on a very different course than you are. Right. Sometimes some friends may walk away, and you may or may not know why they walked out of your life, but you know what? What we have to do is thank God for yes. those that are still here. Yes, Say, thank you, God, thank you. for my friend that stood by me when I thought I could not stand alone. I was talking to my six-year-old granddaughter, who I do this a lot. And so, and I had, she was talking about, Grandma, I'm going to talk to my friend on, on FaceTime. I said, Aubrey, what is a friend? She said, it's somebody that's really nice to me. They like me, and they come and they play with me. And I began, now that's, Aubrey is six. But this is true. A friend is somebody that likes you. That's right. No matter what you are going through, they will be nice to that's you. Right. They may have to put you in your place. Right. They might have to tell you some things that may not be exactly what you want to hear, but they will speak to you with love. They will speak to you with kindness. And even if you have to be rebuked, they would do that in a manner that you can take it. Now, and we talk about the people in the Bible that had many things to go through. And I thought of Job. And when I think of Job, I think of patience and that the scripture that says, in all of my appointed time, I'm going to wait until my change comes. But Job had some friends that thought he was just a little off because of all of the things that he was going through. They did not support him. But you know what happened? Job did not give up on his friends. And the Bible says, and we don't really think about this part. We think about Job and how patient he was. Yes. We talk about his suffering. Yes. But Job was a faithful friend for those people that did not encourage him. Yes. Job 42.10 says, when Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes, giving him twice as much as before. You didn't know that, did you? Read it. Job 42. When Job prayed for these people that had come to discourage him, that sat in front of him, and all they did was talking about all the bad stuff. Yeah, yeah. But when it was all said and done, Job went to God in prayer yeah. to pray for his friends. Yeah. And because he was praying for a blessing for them, God blessed him with and restored his fortunes, giving him twice as much as he had before. Won't God do it? Yes. Won't he do it? Yes. Today we offer our prayer of thanksgiving to God for friends who quietly support us without a lot of fanfare, not a lot of noise, and not a lot of conversation. We give thanks to God for our friends who displayed the love of Jesus toward us. Just like the Lord, they look beyond our faults Forgive us for our mistakes and encourage us to be who God says that we are to be. Jesus says, this is my commandment that you love one another. So just as someone is being a good friend to you, we need to pass it on. That's right. Share the friendship that has been given to you yes. with someone else. Yes. Yes. Thanksgiving for friendship, love, support, patience, and sacrifice. So say thank you to the friends that have been giving themselves to you over and over and yes. over yes. for years. Sometimes siblings can be really good friends. Sometimes Siblings can be 
Not for us at all. <laughs> so, but I want to remind you today not to take your friends for granted. They do not have to do what they do, but thank God that they do what they do for us. So I want to remind you that God is still God and he's still working in all of us. And this week, I was trying to decide if I was really gonna share this because you know sometimes you get so much and I was like, okay, should I say this or should I share that? But it, this was really important to me and I began to just think about over my life and the people that have got me from where I started to where I am today. Mm -hmm. And there are some people that I have been, I'm still in contact with, that I've actually been friends with over 50 years. Wow. And I have friends that I'm still in contact with that I have actually been friends with since I was like 10 or 11 years old. And we talk on the phone and the blessing is that we are encouraged to one another. We are not alike. And my friend Barbara, who I talk about a lot, she and I have been friends since ninth grade. Wow. And I got a card in the mail this week. Mm. Usually we talk. But she likes this scrapbook, but she actually made a card for me. Oh, and I was like, oh my God, how sweet. And in this card, she said, you are my greatest friend. Oh. And she had all these little things, and I said, God, this is it. Amen. We need to be reminded Amen. to thank Amen. and appreciate our friends and the people Amen. that God has put Amen. in my life. Then I thought of the song that we, that we used to sing, it says, I need you, you need me. We are part of God's family. We are part of God's family. So no matter what we are going through, we need each other. And just as God would have it, just before I walked out of my house this morning, do you know the song that came on that had not been on the radio for ages? This song came on the radio this morning. And I said, thank you, God. I will share with your people just to remind them, as we go into this Thanksgiving season, remember to thank and appreciate Amen. the Amen. friends and the supporters Amen. that help us every day, Amen. that blesses us, that we might be blessed to do the things that God has put in, my, in our hearts to do. I need you. You need me. We are part of God's family. And it says, stand with me, agree with me. We are part of God's family. It is his will that every need be supplied. And many times those needs have been supplied through the blessings of God through our friends. Be blessed, people of the Amen. Lord. But just Amen. remember, we're blessed to have people that love us, stand with us, support us, encourage us, and help us as we walk and serve God together. In the name of Jesus, just pray and believe the Lord that he will continue to bless us. We haven't been sick. That's right. Glory to the name Glory of Jesus. Name of we haven't been attacked by the virus. We talk to each other. We haven't been able to fellowship, but we have been blessed right. because we can right. come. A few of us can get together. I can see you on the, on the screen. We can talk to each other on the phone. And we just share the love of Jesus with each other. Bless you in the name of Jesus. I need you, you need me, we're all a part of God's body, stand with me, agree with me, we're all a part of God's body, it is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. I need you. You need me. We're all the part of God. 
God's body stand with me agree with me we're all a part of God's body it is his will that every need be supplied you are, are important to me I need you to survive wasn't that a powerful word this morning I want to, first of all, apologize to some of you that uh, may not have been able to uh, hear very clearly. We had some technical difficulties, but I, I hope you heard all of the message today. Thanksgiving for Friendsgiving. Yes. I tell you, Sister Jeanette, look like the older you get, the... <laughs> 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 we kind of have an inside joke here. But the older you get, I seem like the anointing seems to be heavier yes. Yes. upon yes. your yes. life. Yes. I was sitting there thinking, you know, you can almost count on your hand how many true friends you really have. That's true. Because everybody that say that's your friend. not your friend. I've learned that over the years. Um, I was even thinking when I was coming to church, you know, how this ministry here, this church, have been a blessing to so many people. And good or bad, they can, you can say about me, one of the things you can, can't say that this church has not been a blessing to you. It has served you in so Amen. many ways. Amen. Amen. We've married people, we've buried people, we've given to people, fed people. We've been there for everyone. And uh, so the thing that you said that was so endearing and, and that picked my heart is thank God for those that are still with you. That's right. Yes, Amen. Amen. Thanks for Amen. You know, everybody's not going to stay with you. No. But be grateful for those that stayed with you. And I'm thankful for those who stayed with us through the good times and through the bad. And just this past month, and I'll, we're going to assume that you go, um, a minister that I haven't heard from for, me for years called me. He always called me Dr. King. He said, Dr. King, he said, how are you doing? And I was surprised to hear from him. And uh, I remember when his wife died of cancer, and that's been over five or more years. And he says, what's your address? And I gave him my address. He said, you know, I told you five years ago that I was going to bless you. And uh, I said, well, whatever the Lord lays on your heart. I said, you know, I, I wasn't looking for anything. Right. But I ministered to him during the time his wife passed away. And five years or more later, he calls me and says, I have not forgotten about you. Amen. Amen. I have not forgotten how you ministered to me and ministered to me during a, a very crucial and painful time in my life. He says, what's your address? And so, you know, I gave it to him and not thinking that he was going to do anything because I serve not because of money. Yeah. Right. That's my job to do. Right. Right. And... Uh, a week or so later, I received in the mail a gift from him that I had to get up and shout. Amen. It really blessed and it met a need. I'm not talking about a hundred, a few dollars. He blessed me in a way that I did not even know he thought that much of me. And I says, God, I thank you. I thank you because even when things don't go my way and I'm I, 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 I'm looking for how you're going to do it. God has a way of blessing us. He does exceedingly and abundantly above all that we're able to ask or, or think. He's down there in Los Angeles. And that's where he lives. 
But God laid it upon his heart not to forget about those who uh, we label with and, and serve. So I thank God for you today. Thank you for that message today. I have so many notes, I got to go back and read them. <laughs> but the one that stayed with me again, another one was at Job 42. Job prayed for his friends. Yes. He prayed for those that even didn't like him. That's right. And God blessed him. And that's the thing that we have to remember. We have to pray for even our enemies. Amen. God told us pray for those, our enemies. Amen. Pray for those that who despitefully use us. We have to pray for them. Amen. But God will meet all of our needs. Thank you for the word of God today. Amen. 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 What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not care. Everything to God in prayer. May the Lord bless your hearts real good. Again, we're going to be back on the next week if the Lord says the same. Worshiping and praising the Lord again. But we're getting ready to give as unto the Lord. And someone reminded me this week, he said, Pastor, you always ask us to give, but you forget to bless the offering. And I said, because, you know, I get into that routine that we're going to be marching around yes. and giving. Yes. Yes. And so I forget about that, but still we give, and we need to bless God's offering, Amen. our offering Amen. that we give to the Lord. Amen? Amen. I, I want to leave this scripture with you before you go home. It's found in 1 Chronicles chapter 29. Well, start in, in chapter 28, verse 20. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 20. The Bible says, And David said to his son Solomon, Be strong and of good courage and do it. Do not fear nor be dismayed. For the Lord God, my God, will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you until you have finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. In chapter 29, just below it, it says, Furthermore, King David said to all the congregation, My son Solomon, whom alone God has chosen, is young and inexperienced, and the work is great, because the temple is not for man, but for the Lord God. Now, for the house of my God, I prepared with all my might gold for things to be made of gold, silver for the things of silver, bronze for the things of bronze, iron for the things of iron, wood for the things of wood, oxen stones to be set, glistening stones of various colors, all kinds of precious stones and marble slabs in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of my God, I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house, my own special treasure of gold and silver, and he concludes in that fourth verse, who then is willing yes, yes. to consecrate himself this day to the Lord? God's house has to be cared for. And I'm asking you to give and prepare an offering to give unto the Lord. 
Again, you know the various portals that we announce each week that are available to you online, or you can give directly through your cell phone this morning. Whatever it is, please give. We need your support this week. So I'm asking you to do that today, and the Lord will bless you abundantly. Amen. Amen. He will bless you abundantly. So now, Father God, in Jesus' name, as your people prepare to give on today, bless every gift. Return it to them according to their faith. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. May the Lord bless your hearts real good. I hope you enjoyed the service. Amen. amen. We'll be back on Tuesday evening in Bible study at 7 o'clock. I hope you'll join us and be with us in fellowship with us. So let's get ready to go home. Unmute your mics and we're going to sing together. Let the church say amen. Let the Take that down. <laughs> Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken, so let the church say amen. God has spoken, so let the church say amen. So let the church say amen. May the peace of God be with you until we meet again. Be blessed in the name of the Lord. Your mics are being unmuted. Please fellowship with one another. Amen. Amen.